Thank you so Thank much. You. I'm so happy to be here. Normally I go on and on about how thrilled I am to be around all of you again, but um, we're short on time, so let's get into it. So step one, with anything involving accessibility, I cannot thank everyone enough to always assume positive intent, um, especially now where more and more people are remote. A lot of people who aren't necessarily used to being remote are remote. Um, just always start off with positive intent. Assume that everybody is doing their best. And if you need something, if I say something incorrectly, if someone else does um, or, or produces something, just roll with it. We're all going to get there together. So with that, who am I? I am Donna Bungard. I am a senior project manager. I have a whole bunch of alphabets um, after, my, after my name because I love to learn. The one relevant here is that certified professional professional of accessibility core competencies. Um, so some people think, and obviously by the overall uh, theme of, of, the, of the deck, I probably have been home a lot this year. But where do I work? I work over at Canopy, and we have the recipe for some incredible websites, web experiences. We work with amazing people, um, both on the client side and internally. So you should come, if you want to get in the kitchen with us, come on in, we'd love to, we'd love to talk to you. So, where we left off? We left off with the fact that there are challenges and different people experience different challenges different ways. We have the disability term, which is what people self-identify as in terms of ambulatory, audio, cognitive or visual challenges. And then we also have situational challenges that people need to address. And that can be anything from a temporary injury to just a really crowded train that's really loud. Well, probably not right now. How about a really crowded room because we're all home? Well, many of us are homeschooling and or you have a roommate or maybe the people next door are just really loud. There's always a challenge that can be faced and accessibility. Having an accessible visual presence helps them all. So with that. Our friends at the W3C um, have come up with these beautiful guidelines. Uh, version 2.1 is the most current um, and pretty much internationally is the guideline we go with, um, the version of the guideline we go with. Technically, um, the American with Disabilities Act, Section 508, was refreshed prior to 2.1 being released. So it requires 2.0. But if you want to talk to anybody else in the world or just give the best user experience, just go with 2.1. There is a small, medium, and large, essentially, um, A, AA, AAA. The more uh, more A's, the more criteria. So, you know, everybody industry-wide feels that um, AA is casting the widest net. This is what a lot of our legal issues uh, or, or, or guidelines go by. So there we have it. You've already done it. So let's get into the meat of this. Baking in accessibility. I always say people should just bake it in. And then I keep thinking about the Schitt's Creek reference of just fold it in. If you're not familiar with it, it's this beautiful scene between these amazing actors who are saying, well, just fold it in. But but how do I fold it in? Just fold it in. Neither of these characters had any, you know, been in a kitchen, ever been in a kitchen for its intended use. And, you know, just fold it in. So here we have these beautifully, wonderful, positive intent here, marketing teams trying to just fold it in. And they're told, make sure your colors are right. Make sure your words are right. You know, are you being represented? Are you, are you using great representation? But how do you do that? Where are the pitfalls? This is what people need to know. They don't know always how to fold it in. So, a side note, I really think Jill and Mold should definitely show up more in, in, uh, in, in presentations. I just love the picture. It, it's a little horrifying, but I love it. But if you've ever looked through a 1950s Sense of the Girls um, cookbook, you see a lot of this, so I couldn't resist. But anyway, back to our story. Um, if you're looking for color contrast, logos. Now, there's some, you know, there's some leeway around logos of being compliant or not. But go ahead, look at it anyway. It's a great UX. But check your header. Is your, you have this beautiful, you know, hero banner with this lovely image behind it. 
and then your header text is kind of blurred and having low contrast, that's a big problem. Um, great, Charles. That's awesome that you made accessible color combinations a part of your branding. Um, eyebrows. I don't know the official terms. I, I've always called them eyebrows. You know those little things that are, you have your HP tag and then you have that little thing on top um, that, you know, might be, well, it's like an eyebrow. They're usually these nice light gray, not that, well, the breadcrumbs do. Um, I'll try to find an example and I can tell you after thing. Um, but yeah, so we'll talk breadcrumbs too, but any of those little text that's usually small and grayed out, it's hard. And then the link or the link hover state. Um, a lot of people make sure their link is great and their link hover state is great. But you know what? They don't differentiate those two colors very much. So they don't do as much as much as you think. Um, and then, you know, footer and legal links are notoriously, you know, smaller and, and faded back. So those are all things that that could impact your um, user experience there. And words. Don't use acronyms or numerums unless you've identified them. I'm so guilty of this. I use Ally all the time. Ally is a numerum for accessibility because there's 11 letters in between the A and the Y. Um, don't do it unless you explain it or else you're really excluding people. Um, you want to avoid the slang and pop culture references. Uh, sometimes people don't get it. This also is a big one um, for or just getting a diverse audience. It's not only, only uh, accessibility. You know, you feel like a Red Trek or Star Trek fans means that you know that other than Scotty, anybody in the original series who's wearing a red shirt is going to be dead by the end of the episode. It just happens. But not everyone understands it or making somebody make that connection on the fly isn't always comfortable. So really for usability, whether it be because of um, challenges that might be cognitive or or just distractions. Um, you definitely want to just aim for that ninth grade reading level unless you have reason to go a little harder. Um, if you are a scientific site that are speaking to people directly in that field, it's a niche market, there's going to be play. Um, clarity and consistency. Your this is uh, your tone is, is going to change between things, uh, between mediums, but your voice can't. Use your this goes back to your words. Use words your, your audience is going to understand, and to do that, make yourself a content style guide and bake the accessibility all this stuff right on in, and then to really to be inclusive as well as um, as well as accessible. Definitely add that images and the alt text and all of these beautiful things, but also make sure you have representation and you, and you pay honor to your entire audience that way. And an easy way to do this, to bake it in here, is to build these things into your personas. And now I'm not saying we need a disability persona, we need a disabled persona, we need a, a no, no. This is Howard. He happens to be older, uh, married to a man named Jeffrey, and he loves playing wheelchair tennis. You know a lot about this gentleman. You know, you have a feeling of some of the ambulatory challenges you like just by his hobbies. You do not need to have this tokenism, but you can take this in. And the Cornell University has a disability statistics tool based on the U.S. Um, CDC data that helps you identify, okay, if this person meets these demographics as collected by the CDC, then that person is this likely to experience this type of challenge. So it's a great way to make it a natural process. Whoops. And I don't actually want to click that right now. All right. Getting quick hacking. So I touched on content strategy. I'm a content strategist at heart. So I've already touched a little bit about this, but let's let's talk a little bit about an accessible um, story. You know, story branding is a powerful tool. It's a, basically the official way of saying every every presentation I talk about, I talk about make sure your users the hero of their own story. Now, this doesn't matter if it's a uh, th this person identifies as disabled or not. Accessibility 
help them be a part of their, that hero of their own story. So you still want to define your conversions and goals. And are the form labels uh, readable by a screen reader? Are they palpable for those who are using alternative things other than a mouse? Are, are the visuals and audios of the screenwriter a match? There's going to be times when you can't make them perfectly match. But when doing screen reader analysis or thinking about it, try to keep in mind that not everyone who uses a screen reader is visually impaired. Sometimes people need more than one way to take in that data. And so to do that, you need to make sure that your conversion points, those goals you're making at that strategic level, make sure that those are accessible throughout or your person will never be the hero of the story and you're never going to be able to guide them to that conversion point. So you have to do that. And, and part of that representation piece I mentioned before is that empowering the user to feel that they are a part of that story. And if you, if you ignore 25% of the population, that's 25% that are not a part of your story. And then just like with any content strategy, you always give your user the next step. Can they share? Can they they um, click that next blog article at the bottom of a, of, an, of a page? Are they able to do what comes next? So for example, um, a personal pet peeve of mine is that a lot of sites will have the, the social share at the top in the story underneath. Well, even as a visual user, I would not share something before I read it in most cases. Um, that said, if you have to go backwards with a screen reader or maybe another assistive technology, that's a really poor UX to have to go back through 2,000 words of blog just to get to, your, to the, the share button. So make it something really, give them that user journey. Give everyone that user journey. So three to do's to do while you're in there. Always give context. So if it's alternative text, and I talk about this a little bit more in a minute, or, or captions, don't just say what it is. Communicate the value. Keep things focused. So. If you have a lot of media, allow it to be turned off or paused and never start off with sound. Um, individuals with cognitive uh, challenges, that's really off-putting. Um, for example, someone with ADHD is taking in all the information all the time. Uh, a lot of brilliant people on the spectrum too. Th these are brilliant, amazing audience members but they can't necessarily self-filter if you have everything playing at once. It's, it's disorienting. And, and I've read studies that individuals, if you're trying to target an older generation, that if there is potentially um, early onset of dementia, where these individuals are still wonderfully active, functional, active members of, of society, but that instant audio can cause confusion make sure you allow it, the user to focus their own experience and then empower them. If your content, you're, you know, um, WCAG is based on the poor principle, perceivable, operatable, understandable, and robust. But just bring it down, boil it down for your teams. If your content is perceivable and usable, they can convert. Your marketing, you want those conversion goals, you want those success metrics. So confused, inclusive media with that alt text. This is what I mean about giving context. Technically, using the pencil is that picture. But saying four different types of spatulas gives the value of that image. If you're using um, videos and transcripts, if it's an auto service, you're going to want to, to proofread it before you post it. You know, on a live stream like this, great. Um, Real quick, not to conflict with the other captioning going on. Google um, offers captions, Zoom offers captions. There's lots of options. You can just build this into your everyday practices, especially again, where everyone's going remote. Um, live captioning services are amazing. These, I, I don't know how people keep up with 
um, individuals who do this specialized classes I do in situations like this. Um, they are, but they provide really more accurate captions, or at least will get the more of the meaning of what you're saying, as opposed to an auto option. Um, both are completely wonderful and legitimate. Um, descriptive text goes beyond that audio track to include descriptions and visual attributes, meaning um, this might be woman with big curly hair, red lipstick is flailing her arms around as she's talking. That would be the descriptive text here. Um, your images, it's, color contrast is important, but also make sure it's it's pleasant. Um, there are many, many similar simulators out there. And you can take a look at that and see how your media really can look. I mean, it won't be exact. There's different levels, there's spectrums, there's there's uniqueness to every individual in their experience. Even um, non-colorblind individuals will perceive colors differently. So you're never going to have everyone have the same experience, but check it. Can you see the content? Can you see the text? Is this all perceivable? Are they going to make it to your conversion point? And then again, representation. Um, in truth, everything here except this young man um, in the Target ad is really targeting um, that market. Actually, no, that's a lie. This stuff piece was not targeting assistive, um, whether it be clothing or, or media. But nonetheless, the representation matters. I, it stood out to me outside of a, where was I, old Navy or something. I saw a big poster and they had complete representation from, from people of different body styles, different um, identifications, different wheelchairs. There was one uh, individual, a young woman in a wheelchair. There was very, focus and it wasn't just one picture where they they pushed everybody together it was a series of pictures that were trying to promote a very inclusive approach and everyone deserves to feel like they are part of that story so i know i have three minutes left and we're almost there um so where do we go from here practice empathy and if there's nothing in this world that can speak empathy more it's a salmon pink sour creamy Jello mold thing. I don't know if that was just too scary to me to not do it. Maybe it was just lovely, but that just is, it just stood out to me. No, but build an understanding, build empathy, um, see things from other people's, or maybe experience things from other people's point of views. There are simulators out there, there are practices out there. There's just a matter of going through in your own site and just using your tab keys to navigate. There's a lot you can do to build understanding and build that empathy because that is what's going to help you remember as you continue to grow your marketing practices. And whenever possible, test with native users. Um, native users are individuals who use assistive technology every day to get through life. And that, that just means that they're going to know things that you don't or are likely to when it comes to how to use a specific in the in real life. Um, but you definitely want to monitor that if you're having testing because if an individual is unable to perceive it, keyboard only navigation skips a whole component, well then they're not necessarily going to know if they're perhaps unsighted. Um, yeah. And with that, are there any questions other than me calling things breadcrumbs and eyebrows and such? All right, I'll be around later too. Um, coming up next, we are almost to happy hour. Woohoo! Um, you can always check out the website for more details. There's board games tonight. There's more stuff tomorrow. And I think we are good. If you ever need us, we are over here at uh, the Canopy and we'd love to talk to you. And again, I'll do one more shameless plug that we are hiring. So come on over and uh, come, come cook in the kitchen with us.